the yeah on the <clears> offense. <throat> Now that we've seen the draft here, before we send it over to our casters, couches, predictions, uh, based on what we see? I think Prepare I'm gonna go with EG battle. again, still. So. They have team fight this time. They don't need to win the lanes. Ouch, EG over here. You two? With Complexity Winter? What do you think? <laughs> certainty That's in his so voice. Uh, <laughs> I guess. If, uh, I'm just not sure about the death properly. Like... I mean, we are supposed, we are supposed <laughs> to support Complexity, but uh, looking at the draft, it's it's quite uh, easy for EG to play if, the If game, Death Prophet doesn't... Say, have a rough time, I think Flexi win, but I, I think Death Prophet will have a rough time. Yeah, so that's, I, I'm, that's I think EG will win just because they can shut Death Prophet down. But if Flexi wins because Death Prophet does really well. We'll see what it's going to be. We'll send it over to Casters now. It's going to be Odie and Draskal. Gentlemen, first blood's coming potentially. Oh. There's no chance for that one, Ella, ladies and gentlemen. It's game two here, Complexity, EG, I'm Odie Pixel, and I'm here with Drasko and Andy. Seeing some similarities from game one, going, you know, transitioning here into game two. We're switching it up a little bit. We're seeing some favorites. We're going to see the Fear Enigma coming out for the side of EG. Artur sticking with his clinks. Other things to mention, obviously, the fact that they were talking about in the draft. We're going to see the Chessy Death Prophet. Yeah, it's a hero that uh, up until this point has not been picked at all, I think, right? Or maybe it's been picked like once or twice, but either way, it'd be interesting to see how they play it out here. Looks like it will be going mid, starts with the, the Null Talisman, or maybe even the safe lane, I guess, because Handskin's kind of sticking around the here too. Begins. But I, I kind of agree with the couch who sided with Ichi. I think their lineup is, is greedy in a good way. So you have the Tide Hunter, who's going to be able to get something out of his lane pretty much no matter what. It's very hard to kill the hero. And even if you don't have a great lane, you can still go back and kill uh, jungle stacks and things like that. You have Enigma, who is going to be very hard to pressure. And I also feel like it's a greedier pick than an Enchantress. So Enchantress is a type of hero that wants to try to control the laning phase. You know, you want to try to dictate the tempo of the early game. And if you don't do it successfully, the Enigma just becomes better because he gets more out of the jungle. His teamfight presence is obviously going to be greater. So I think uh, I agree with the, the couch who is siding with EG that their lineup is just a bit easier to use. In terms of lanes as well, this mid lane, once again, Limp and Hans Ken on the tiny eye that we saw do an incredible amount of work in game one. Uh, should Limp have just as easy of a time farming up against the Corp as uh, he did, of course, uh, against the Amber? Or is it going to be a little bit more tricky? Queen's a little bit tougher because the Wisp can't reliably trade against Queen. Basically, you're going to be relying on the mana that you gain through Bottle of Hand Skin to throw like tosses out, you know, harass, things like that, go for CS. But it should be pretty much impossible for this lane to kill Sumail unless he makes a a glaring mistake, which I don't really see happening as he is mechanically a very good player when it comes to the laning stage. So, all in all, I would think that given the way the lanes are kind of shaping up, this is what EG were expecting. This is kind of what they're okay with. But at the same time, I think Complexity are also okay with this because their Death Prophet is not going to be highly prioritized in the early game. And if for whatever reason EG start trying to gank, you always have the Enchantress to fall back on to help you try to control that early game. Indeed, and as you said, the Death Prophet hit on that solo safe lane up against Universe's Tide. We talked about it on the panel. Death Prophet should have no trouble finding farm down there, and it's showing at the moment, six for one. But at the same time, Universe, he's getting some in as well. Oh, we'll see Chessie just moving there with a the Siphon, keeping the Tide Hunter at bay. But as you said, as long as this stays one-on-one, -on -one, you expect the trades to, to continue to be even in terms of farming? Well, EG will pull ahead because they have Enigma. Enigma farms faster than anyone. Like, this hero just destroys the jungle. It's not even close. So, that being said, EG has the greedy lineup. That's pretty much all we talk about when, or, or all we mean when we refer to greed, is the fact that one team will be able to get more out of the early laning phase of the game, if it's static. And again, that all depends on what Z Freak wants to do, if he wants to prioritize going for trying to pressure a lane. The problem is, can't really pressure mid, because you need a very specific creep to kill Sumail. And you're also going to need to toss back onto a tower if you want to kill him too. That's pretty much the worst thing that's going to happen is what we just saw there. He's going to eat a combo, eat a couple of spirits, then he'll either have to bottle crow or he'll have to go back to base. And then you can maybe kill top, but then you're also going to need to dust for that. Pure at the moment, Magic Ali is continuing to do this pretty much uninterrupted. We'll see. I was just heading over, but... Not going to go any closer here to the Enigma. But at the same time, over on the side of the Radiant, we're seeing some lovely stacks being done here by Z Freak. Just trying to give Limp uh, on the Tiny that edge that he did get in the first game. We saw a lot of stacking done by Complexity. So Limp got that that kind of just that initial burst of goals. So he got the good timing on the Blink and, and was able to be as effective as we saw him be in the mid-game fights. 
I think it's going to be more of the same here too, because again, it's a hero that he's playing that's not necessarily going to have to be a hard position one. Now granted in game one he had a standout performance, so he was just owning everything with the help of Hanskin. This game I think it's going to be more of the same, just get the stacks, get the blink dagger going, try to initiate for your team. Sumail taking quite a bit of damage here going to be forced to bottle up. And this is also another game where there's a lot of good kill targets for this tiny. Like you have the Venge, you have the Queen, who typically does a build into uh, too much health items, at least in the very early stages of the game. You know, maybe Sumail picks up like a casual vital or a casual point booster for Aghanims later. That's probably going to be one thing to look for, but the rest of the heroes aren't really that hard to combo down. At the moment, uh, here are the Reverend talks about Swindles on this Beastmaster. He's found himself level four at this point. Uh, Aunt TZ, he's getting, uh, he's getting a good amount, but he's top of the board. A little bit better start for him than he had in game one, but 23 for six. He'll be happy with that. Do you imagine we'll see him go for the same kind of build? Uh, does he need to prioritize the BKB as early as he did in game one this time around? Uh, I don't know if BKB is really even that good. Yeah. Like, do you have Roar? The Spirit Siphon goes through BKB. Exorcism goes through BKB. He's kind of looking for a kill here, middle lane. Nice blink. Okay. But, yeah, I, I don't think BKB is very good at all, actually. The only thing that you're stopping really is spirits and the, the stun. Toss from Tiny. Still, bottom lane. What's going on here? We've got a bit of a walk around where Chest is coming in close. And uh, in terms of the, the skill build here, maxing out the Siphon, it's going to be great in terms of zoning out the tide. Yeah, it's, it's a standard build. Even if you're 1v1 mid, this is what you do. Because you're more about the lane dominance now than you are even pushing out the wave just by spamming the, uh, the Crypt Swarm. So this build is kind of what we've been seeing when uh, Death Prophet was being picked quite a bit uh, a week or two ago. Maybe even, maybe it was longer than that, but she had seen a little bit of play. People found out that you could gank her and then she kind of fell off. So putting her in the safe lane, I think, is a, a nice alternative way of doing it. Just saying, ganking the safe lane with the lineup that EG has is actually fairly difficult. Like, they could send the Enigma down, like Blitz was suggesting on the couch, but... Enigma most of the time just wants to sit in the woods and farm. Like, this guy has got 44 CS at 5 minutes, and yes, of course, they are jungle creeps, so they don't necessarily give the same amount of farm as a lane, but... Pair, he's level 6, Sumail's level 6. They're pretty much identical in terms of experience and net worth. Now, this could be the rotation that Chessie might not expect. RTZ, now level 6, just TPs into the bottom lane. I was hoping to eat a creep here, but not in the camp at this point. I might try and just go at it anyway if Chessie comes a bit too far forward. Chessie is actually going to start to back away here. And this could be potentially just time wasted for Arteezy if he doesn't find a kill off the back of this. Really wants to try and make something happen with the fact that he's just hit that level 6. and oh, He's just going to break the um, invis and, and just go for a couple of hits. It's not going to result in anything. And this is just going to be time out farming here for Arteezy. That was a really nice attempt, because he knew the next creep wave would give Universe 6, and having Ravage plus the Clinks there would almost assuredly kill the Death Prophet. Oh, Hanskin, he will tether across, nice avalanche from Liv, holding back Fear, and Samael, the Sully wave coming through, will just clip Hanskin on the edge, and that's going to be your first but there for the quad. Bottom Only lane. just that. Yeah, pretty dead Death Prophet. And he's stuck around, and here's the combo you talked about, just setting up with the Ravage, Jesse trying to keep himself alive there with the Siphon. It's not going to be powerful enough for the second kill on the board for EG and RT's little adventure to the bottom lane does end up paying off. That's the kind of gank that uh, is a little bit hard to anticipate. Like the first time he backed up, maybe he just assumed since there was a fight going on towards the top river that there was a, a low probability that there would be a Clinks kind of just sitting there and going for a kill on him. But during this time, Swindle did manage to hit level 6, so they're not pressuring his lane so much anymore. And PPD is also closing in on the same. He's going to have swap and next creep waiver too. And I think they want to try to go for a dive here. PPD might need a teleport here. Uh, he's going to try and see if the swindles. He's got the raw. He says, PPD, I'm taking you downtown. You'll get the kill. There'll be a TP coming through from a not TZ. Fear for attending round as well as Swindles. Looks like he will get punished here. Look at the Malefis down. TZ with the right clicks. It's going to be more than enough to find that kill in return. So Swindles does pay for his sins, taking out PPD. But EG is there to back up their captain and get the revenge kill. Yeah, it was a little bit of over-aggression. I think it's not too bad, though. Maybe at the end of the day, it's slightly favoring EG just because it was an off-lane position. They get the tower deny. Of course, a couple of people were given credit for the experience and goal of the kill itself. So EG is seeming pretty solid in this early game. And I think that, for the most part, Complexity's lineup is going to get a lot stronger once the Tiny has the blink, of course, and then once the IO has relocate. Very similar to game one, where they kind of need that timing. And to be honest, the laning phase is fairly reminiscent of game one. Because like EG 
They're winning the lanes, they're doing everything they need to do, and then as soon as Relocate came online and the blink came out from Limp, Complexity just flipped the game on its head, so we'll see if the same happens here. Easy continue to sneak around here. Uh, he's gonna look at Z Freak. He's trying to go for this one. Untouchable Z between the boys. He's enough to keep himself alive. We've got the heal and will pop the dust. He's gonna catch our tour. The spirit flying through and hands get chucked in. They're trying to chase down the clings. PBD is around. He hasn't got level Radiant's 6 yet, so he's not going to have a swap to save our tour if they do get the catch out. Tossing forward the edge. Chessie's there as well, but the dust, it runs out. RTZ. Lucky to get away there, Radiant's was able to duke him out long enough, attack. make him chase for the duration of the dust to wear off, and RTZ's going to be a lucky survivor. I think they want to go back in. He can just eat a creep, and they can go back down. His ravage up in about 5 seconds. And let's see if Chessie expects this. Does he just assume that Artur would have backed off after that? He is spooked. Uh, and the drawing's being made. In fact, Chessy, he's starting to run back. Artiz, he's still on his game position. He's got PPD there as well. Chessy could be in trouble if they catch him out with a stun. But at the same time, there is a smoke from Complexity, so they could try and turn this one around. They will lose Chessy here on the Death Prophet, but they might be able to find Artiz and PPD in return. Here comes the rotation. Swindle's moving in, looking for Artor. Artor. Sintail down to the south, they'll pop out the dust, but it doesn't quite catch RTZ. RTZ will be fine. PPD made it out to the east. So to lose Chessie down the Death Prophet and Complexity, send the whole team in, but they can't quite catch anyone out in return. Yeah, it was an unfortunate smoke because not only did they waste it, but they lost the hero in the time that they smoked, so it was not as effective as they wanted it to be. But again, Limp is closing in on the Blink Dagger. Once he gets that, they're going to be able to team fight no problem. The one thing, though, that's kind of concerning is the fact that we haven't really even seen exorcism be used one time. I think it's very common for teams to pick Death Prophet nowadays, especially considering at level 1, exorcism is quite a bit better than it used to be. It used to be like 3 or 4 spirits at one point without having any points under witchcraft, but now it's up to 8, obviously, to supplement the fact that witchcraft doesn't exist as a skill anymore. And it's still more, even with accounting for the witchcraft, than it ever was. And I think you can just use that to push. But it doesn't seem like they want to try to group up this early. They're just prioritizing the level uh, level six on the wisp attack. and blank before that. Well, it's easy. He's, he's following around, they're getting the intel. Radiance and one thing we've got to mention is the fact attack. that Fear, he was getting a lot of space up top whilst that was all going down. It's ten minutes in, he's got his mech done, nearly level nine on the Enigma. Yeah, he is mega farmed actually. This is a really a rough situation for Cole. I was talking about how it felt similar to the first game, but Radiant's one of the big differences is, is EG don't have drastically inferior teamfight this game. Teamfight is actually point. extremely good. Oh, swap onto Swindles, into the Magic Missile, Artis is there with damage, they'll take down the Beast Master Lift, get the Avalanche off, almost an Artis, but they're going through there, around the human universe, they're trying to move into position, they'll just focus down Lint there with the Eidolons, they'll get IO as well, their universe brings down the Anchor onto the little ball, three dead on complexity. And EG there just right on top of Complexity, just messing around in the middle. I don't know, man. They, they just don't really seem to be on the same page right now. Last game, they were a well-oiled machine, and Z Freak also going to be getting dove here. Oh, middle man. lane, see you later. That's a fourth one, and Chessie, the last one standing, trying to find a tier two. Artur is going to hang around, jumps on Carty, and trying to get himself in position, but that is on Chessie to get the siphon off it. So RTZ, oh, the courier as well. Oh dear! Oh dear, oh dear! Artur pays with his life. He does get the curry. That is Limit's blink gone for three minutes. I mean, we can talk about whether that was worth it there from RTZ Toozy. Well, blink for three minutes is a big deal, but it's a just Sonic waving the hell out of B B Swindles. Uh, you know what gets on the anchor smash? That might be enough to keep him alive. In fact, it looks like it is. Limp can't quite get the punches through. Samuel clears up the eye on the back lines as well. So everything is happening everywhere. People are dying, but blink on the sideline for two and a half minutes for this tiny. Yeah, it's really bad news for Complexity. Their Wisp is still not 6. Getting into uh, 13, 14 minute plus territory where you definitely want to try to be level 6 by that point. EG just seems to have a much better laning phase than Complexity. And I believe that the panelists also said that between uh, Game 1 and Game 2. You just have mechanically skilled players who normally more out of their lane than what Complexity do. And when Complexity don't have the superior team fight composition, it doesn't really feel like they can really do anything against what EG has put together here. So, I think the tight opening so far from EG seems to be working out very well for them. EG just gonna go for Roche. It doesn't look like Complexity like, gonna be able to do anything to contest this. They should be able to take this one down at a pretty reasonable rate. That is gonna be the Aegis going the way of EG almost certainly.
I mean, as for the next fight that they're gonna have ready to go. As you said, EG is um, turning up a lot more here in game two than they did in game one. Ten for two at this point. About a 6k net worth lead. Nothing too, too insane, but 13 minutes in. The one that Complexity are gonna be worried about. A few little things as well that's putting them on the back burner. As you said, the slow level six is coming out. Some of the key heroes, limp without his blink, putting Cole in in quite a rocky position at the moment. Well, there are a couple of Radiance nice things for complexity. The fact attack. that Chessie's going to be level 11 soon is nice. Level two exorcism is quite literally twice as good as level one. They could catch Swindle here. Uh, it looks like they will. They've got four. They think they're five coming in. Swindle, up you go, son. Oh, it's easy with the kill. All money into the bank of the clinks. Swindles was desperate to try and finish off that tier two, but on his own, go right on top of that. At the same time, mid lane, you've got Jesse trying to finish off the tier one. We'll do some fierceism, gets the silence onto Universe. Be a little bit careful, the rest of EG coming across the map. Maybe see if they can get anyone here off the back of Complexity's retreat. They'll keep it safe, they keep it cool, and Jesse gets away with that. That was a nice trade. The problem that I think that they're running into is the way that you use Exorcism is very important when you're playing Death Prophet. If you, if you see the way that EG are playing, they're fighting around their ultimates and then they're pushing towers after the fact. Whereas the complexity, they're kind of getting picked. They pop the Death Prophet ult and they are going for towers, but they have it for the team fight. And I really think that if they don't have it for the team fight, then you actually can't even think about trying to 5 versus 5 against EG. It's just way too hard. There's Black Hole. There's Ravage, there's Queen Ulti. Just the sheer amount of damage output and control that they have at a 5 versus 5 is, is too much to handle. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about the Queen Ulti, so man, he is, of course, going for the Aghanims. Uh, he's just 1k gold away from it. And exactly that thing, team fight timing, the fact that with a 40 second cooldown, you're pretty much able to fight, you know, two, three times within the duration of Chessie waiting for Exorcism to come back online each and every time, which is going to be huge in this kind of game. Yeah, cooldowns are everything when you're playing these types of lineups where. If Exorcism is down, teamfight is lost. If it's up, you might be able to win. That's pretty much how complexity have to look at this game. You can't fight around uh, like two and a half minute ultimates and expect to be able to win the engagement if the enemy team has theirs and you don't have yours. So with that being said, the game is a, a very different dynamic than game one because complexity can't just always look for the fight. Like even right now, Universe is farming this bottom lane. They can't go for him like this. They can't burst down that. And that's yeah. Universe's blink dump. This is the this is the big contrast that we're talking about. It's like complexity just don't have the team fight control. Oh, let's see what a call's gonna be. That sounds like a dust was pop there just to see if they could find a random art or yeah. Gonna be the case. It's easy. It's on a bit of a mission here, looking to track down Z3. See if he can do anything about this one. He's gonna go for it. Eat the Centaur. Gonna be enough damage though, Z Freak, with the heal. It's unable quite yet to just uh, sit there and burst down an Enchantress that easy. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain getting through uh, getting through the Ench, but... I don't think they're gonna to be too Radiant's torn up about it. He's still in a fairly attack. dominant position here in game number two. Yeah, Looking for... Got Ravaging Black already for this push. I mean, until we see a team fight where Complexity use all of their abilities in conjunction and not just use Death Prophet for a split pusher, we're not going to have a really 100% sure understanding of how uh, how difficult the game is going to be for them. But as it stands right now, it ain't looking great. Dyer's middle tower. Like Swindles and Samael giving it a bit of some. Samael went out with the Sonic Wave, but Swindles just turns around with the Primal Roar. Swind <laughs> oh, Samael. Blinking out just in time, but talking about Link's Limp comes in with the Avalanche. Samael, oh! He's still alive, he's still alive, gets off the secondary bling. He will escape. I mean, he's got Aegis anyway, so... He doesn't go for that kill unless he has two lives. It's gonna be... Not easy. He loves this Enchantress. He's always hunting down Z3. And he's gonna go for a bit of a tempt here, maybe. He does have fear here as well, and Z3 could be in trouble. And the heal. Not gonna be enough to save him this time. That's gonna be a dead edge. That oh, damage. It's easy being credited to the kill. Damage output is insane. Plus, it's like having strafe. It's 130 attack speed. Untouchable, I think, is like one. I think it's 130 max. It's yeah, they're, they're both 130. Yeah. So it exactly completely negates Touchable, which is quite nice. But still, EG maintain. Full map control. Still got Aegis up on Sumail if they want to try to push. 
can go for the tier 1 off lane. It's pretty much a free tower at this point. Dyer's I don't think there's any reason why Complexity would want to contest a tier 1. PG eyeing up Limp, the swap into the stun. Limp will get off the avalanche, but at the same time, the rest of EG, they pick off the eye on the side. There's going to be no stay for Limp. Oh, Ravi comes from Universe just in time to stop the TP. They'll take down the Tarnit as well. And do you know how manly you have to be to throw out a Ravage like that? Yup. I mean, I he already had the TP started. And then he, he, he knew just, he had it. Universe he's knew he just had it. like, I got it. No problem. Boss Max, Range Ravage. And when Universe says he's got it, he's got it. He definitely does. This is a very, very tough game for Complex today at this point. It got out of hand pretty early, to be honest. Like, just the, the simple fact that the rotation early on, they killed Chessy. They were talking about on the couch. Uh, it wasn't fear though that rotated ended up being Artor just having the disable and the clinks is more than enough to kill just a death prophet. Top lane swindles. Be uh, lucky the universe doesn't have the ravage, of course, as always already used. Chessy's coming in, but EG, they've got a full five mana pack. What the smoke there? <laughs> just quickly dispel, they jump straight into the chest, they get the swap, they'll be the Royal to Universe, but Universe, he's already used the Ravage, they don't need, need his ultimate that bad, he's gonna lose the Death Prophet, Hanske gets tossed in, Lip! He says to take the Io, well, we'll give you him as kind of a, a trade-off if you let the rest of us live, and the rest of them do, but Chessy and, Chessy and Hanske down for that. It was a peace offering. It was, yes. After game one, Cole were like, alright, we messed up, we're sorry. Here, take this Wisp, please leave us alone. <laughs> This keeps uh, yeah. EG though, feeling uh, pretty unstoppable right now. This this kind of shows, I think the Complexity Radiance had some ideas tower. to try to deal with the Enigma Tide, but they had to have known that EG were running it. It's when we see it earlier on in the tournament and just understanding Radiance that Universe and like PD and Fear play those heroes and they've been known to do it in the past, Radiance this is something that you kind of have to be able to see coming, right? It's I mean, it is the con. We see one of the other teams, of course, we saw doing a few times with Secret. Right over the misery. Puppy's done. Swap on to Chessy. He did get off the exit. The Avalon comes. It's nice. He's falling low. He'll go down. For the Brad Cole from there! Look who has been stunted! Universe comes in with the Agnes Mount. Four dead. Five dead. Easy clean up how fear. Turning up with the biggest black hole yet of this tournament. Well, um, if the game wasn't already difficult, that just made it a heck of a lot worse. It was a very, very heavy commitment though. As soon as Jesse gets swapped, complexity has to go. Especially since the ultimate was popped too, so... It's gonna be a pretty easy racks here, 21 minutes in, give or take, for EG. Only three kills on the side of complexity. And I gotta say, if they, if they thought that they had a way of dealing with this type of lineup, this was not the way. I don't know if z -Freak just couldn't find any opportunities to go for kills, but I think the way that ended up drafting this is he says all I want to do is make sure that my solo lanes are hard to gank because then the Enchantress has a really hard time influencing the laning phase in a big way and since we pick Enigma we know that we're going to be getting more out of the laning phase so long as every hero stays alive on our team and just going off of that and the, the idea that they have insane team fight potential and a good amount of damage split as well it's just been a, a total massacre so far here in game two uh, it, it just feels like the Tarnio the great first game but if there's a team that you're not going to be able to pull the same kind of stuff against twice, it's EG. Yeah. Because PPD is the, uh -huh, you did that first, I'll uh, work out what to do the second time. Why is PPD a 1960s gangster? <laughs> how, did, how Why did he turn into that? I don't, I don't know. know, but this is some gangster stuff right here from EG. Their adaptation has always been phenomenal, though. I mean, that's one of the things that is, that is a hallmark of EG, is their ability to... I mean, they're literally known for going to the lower bracket, and then going through the lower bracket, and then winning. That's what EG do. So, adaptation, always going to be something on a checklist if you're talking about, talking about this team. So, uh, oh, okay, Complexity uh, just tap out. Woo, Personally, I think they already did it because it said 322. Oh, lovely Ravage Universe. Do it again, would you? Oh, and it was, three, it was 322. 322? It was 3 to 20. Oh! Near to you, that's why they GG. No, I'm an idiot. I, mean, I was I had a cheeky old tap to Twitch. I was like, why is everyone saying 3 2 2? No one's throwing yeah. this one. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> to be, to be perfectly sorry, fair, though, all.